Are you tired of skimming through different web scraping tools and spending hours scraping data manually every time the website updates? What if I told you that you can automate this process and let make.com handle all the scraping for you? Hey everyone, welcome back to Skill Curve. Here at Skill Curve, we post daily videos on new cutting edge technologies. Today, we're going to explore the possibilities that make.com has to offer. We're going to start with a very basic web scraping setup where we are going to use Scrape Ninja and scrape a list of URLs from our sheet and then write the scrape data back to that sheet. After we get the basic setup down, we will start building up our custom scraping setup and you can use this same setup with just a few tweaks to scrape just about any website over the internet. So without wasting much time, let's get started. As I just mentioned, we're going to start with a really beginner level and the simplest scraping setup. So I'm going to go and create a scenario just by clicking here. So what we are going to do in this scenario is we are going to go and fetch the URLs from this Google Sheet here. Then we're going to use the Scrape Ninja API. After that, we're going to use the Scrap Ninja's sandbox and we will get the extractor function. You can actually write your own extractor function, but I would recommend you can use this for the beginner purposes because the purpose of this beginner level scenario is just to make you understand the concepts. So let's actually get started. And the first module that we want is the Google Sheets module. So I'm going to go and choose Sheets. And the action that we want to perform is we want to search for a row. So we're going to go with search rows. After that, you will have to set up your connection here. Mine is already done. You can do it within a few clicks. After that, I'm going to choose the spreadsheet that I just created, which is the beginner scraping sheet and the name of the spreadsheet, which is going to be sheet one. And that's all you have to do. Just leave the rest of the settings as it is because the default settings work quite well. Our Google Sheets module is now set. What we need is the Scrape Ninja module now. So I'm gonna go and add the Scrape Ninja module here. And the module that we'll be using is the Scrape module. Here you will again have to establish a connection with Scrape Ninja. For that, you can actually go to Rapid API and here you can get their endpoint for free. So mine is already done. I don't need that. And the next thing that we want to do is we want the URLs of the target website. So I'm going to go with the URLs that are coming through the sheet. After that, I scroll down and you will see this extractor input here. So for that, we'll go to the Scrape Ninja sandbox. And here we'll click on this website metadata. And this will generate this JavaScript function, which will actually extract data from that HTML. So let's just copy this and we're going to paste it here. Once you're done doing that, just click on OK. Now that we have set up our Scrape Ninja module, let's actually go and run this once to check whether it's working properly or not. So let's click on run once. So as you can see, we're getting all the URLs from our sheet. Then we're actually scrapping all the websites right in here. And we're getting the results from the extractor here. You can see we get the image, the fab icon, the title and the description. But for the sake of this video and just to give you the idea of what we can do with make, I'm just going to go and grab the title and the description and write it back to our Google Sheet. So for that, let's add another Google Sheet module right in here. So I'm going to go with the Google Sheet module. And this time I want to update a rule. So I'm going to go and select the spreadsheet ID, which is going to be the beginner scraping sheet. Then I'm going to choose the sheet name in the row number. What you can do is you can actually select the row number from right in here, which is two, and it will gradually increase for each row. Next, what you want is you want to populate these two columns, the title column and the description column. So what we can do is in the title column, we can go to the results right in here and here we can select this title and in the description column, we can select the description. So now that we have all of our data that we want to write into our Google Sheet again, let's just click on OK and let's try to write the data back to our Google Sheet. So just for a sanity check and just to show you guys that we have a blank sheet right now, and we're going to run this automation and it's going to populate these data fields right in here. So let's go and do that. So as you can see, we have updated the rows and all the data is right in here, but there is a few of them that are missing. But I think this actually gives you the general idea what you can actually do with make automations and scrape data. And for the titles that are missing, as you can see, imdb.com doesn't offer a title in their metadata to just secure themselves. So yeah, these kind of things can happen in a few websites which are actually prone to security. But overall, I hope you get the concept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this blueprint for you guys and I will provide it in the description. So let's go and export the blueprint. All right, so now that we're done with our beginner level scraping, 
let's go and build our very own customized scraping automation. All right, so this time we're actually going to go and scrap listings from this real estate website here. So what we are planning to do is I'm going to go and ping this link. Then I'm going to grab all the HTML from here. I'm going to parse it. Then I'm going to get the individual listings for all of these properties. Then I'm going to parse it again. And I'm going to filter out the information that I need. Maybe it can be the price or the mortgage payment. So let's dive right into it and do it. So here on our make, the first thing that we need to add is an HTTP module. So I'm going to go with HTTP module here. And I want to make a request. So let's grab this here. Here I'm going to be pasting in the link of the site that I want to scrap. So I'm going to be pasting in the link. And I'm not going to give it any headers because it's going to be a single ping. So that's quite safe already. But later on, you'll be seeing me adding headers in this section here. So for now, this is good to go. Let's just hit OK. So I want to add an HTML to text parser right in here. What this would do, it would rip off all the HTML from the data that we are scrapping right in here. So I'm going to go add, I'm going to go and give it the data that I'm scrapping from this module right in here. And that's it. So after we're done with the text parser, let's actually go and check the output that we're receiving. So let's run this once. And it's going to give you this warning that the last module is a transformer. But let's just know that. And there you go. As you can see in the data section here, there's a ton of data. And if you scroll it all the way down, you can see the size of the data that is being fetched, which is a huge number. And after we have parsed the data, we can see that the text that we are getting is HTML free, which is good. And what we actually want is something like, if I go to an individual listing, I can see in the address bar that the link starts from home and ends at the number. So I'm going to go and grab this right in here. I'm going to search that into this text here. And as you can see, we have 36 instances of this. But what we want are the individual listings. So here you can see that this is a link to an individual listing. So if we can test this out, I'm going to go and actually try to test this out here. So first off, I'm going to paste this here. So I'm going to paste in the rest of the address here. And that's it. Let's go and check if we're actually getting the right thing. As you can see, this is similar to this one. So I guess the accuracy is quite good. Now what we can do is we can actually go to ChatGPT and ask it to generate a regex for this, a way to filter out just the information that we need. I actually paused the video and made this regex. You can actually use ChatGPT to generate the same regex, but I like this website here. As for explanation of the regex, as you can see, the link starts with a square bracket and ends with a square bracket. So we have those brackets here, and then we have the home in between because every link starts with a home and this dot and asterisk means that anything after home slash is going to be accommodating inside the space. So that's how it's actually filtering out these links. So I'm going to go and actually use this. So let's copy this back to our make automation. What we can do, we will have to add a match pattern. Here I will be pasting in the regex that I just built and I'm going to turn on the global match for this one. And in the text, what we want is we want the past text that we just got. So I'm going to go and add that as well. And with this match pattern, we're getting the individual URLs. Now that we have the individual URLs, what we can do is we can actually add another HTTP request module right in here. But before we do that, let's actually go and test this out. We got the links, but they're a bit too long. I guess this is because Make is using Greedy by default and what we can do with, we can actually split the string just by this bracket here, the square bracket. So we can actually call a split function. What you can do is you can split the links in a separate module, or you can do that while you're actually making a request. What I personally prefer is actually setting up a separate module just to keep things a bit more simpler. So let's go and select a tool from here. So I'm going to go and select set multiple variables. And here I can add an variables. So I'm going to go with split. And for the value, I'm going to pass in a function, which is going to be get. And after that, I'm going to split the data that I'm getting from the parser. And I want to split it by the right square bracket. And I just want the left side of the bracket. So what we can do now is we can actually click OK. Now this module here will actually split the URL and make it a bit more simpler. One thing that I want to mention before making an other HTTP 
that if you request to any server too often, they might think that you're a bot and not a human. They might not let you actually scrap that. So to prevent that, what we can do is we can add a sleep delay right in here. So I'm going to go with four seconds here. This will give it a four seconds delay before making the request. Then I want to add the make request module right here. And this time for the URL, what we are going to do is we're going to paste in the universal URL and then we are going to paste in the URL of individual listings, which is in the split module. So that way we can actually scrap data from each URL. And now one more thing that I told you that I'm going to go and add headers here because I want them to think that I'm an actual browser and I'm a human that's serving their website. So let's go and add headers here. For that, what you can do is you have to go to the website. So then you will have to go to the network tab right in here. And what you can do is here you can actually add headers. So if I click on this here, I can see that we have a header section here. So what I can do is I can actually add all these headers to make it seem like I'm an actual human being who is visiting their website. So let's go and add these headers. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and add all of these headers quickly and I'm going to skip that part just to save time. But don't worry, I'm going to explain each and every header after I'm done pasting them there. So I'm done adding the headers. The first header is going to be accept. Then we're going to add the accept encoding header and the accept language header, which is going to be English US. And later on, we're going to add the cookie. This way we can actually fake that we are a browser and a human is serving it. So that is all that you have to do. After that, just click on OK. And I like to be extra cautious. So I'm going to add another sleep delay right in here. And this time it's going to be four seconds again. So let's go and do that. This one is getting the individual listings. So what we want is to parse that listing first. So I'm going to go and add an HTML to text parser right in here. And this time I'm going to pass in the data that I'm getting from this one. So with that, just click on OK. Before moving forward, let's actually go and check whether our automation is working properly or not. So let's click on run once. Everything seems fine. Let's just stop this. I don't want to make them feel that I'm a bot. And here in the individual listing HTTP, you can see that the data that we are getting is each page for each link. So let's say for each individual listing, what we want is the total price of the house. And let's say we want to calculate the price per square feet. And you can play with it however you want to. But the purpose of this video is just to show you the potential of web scraping using make.com. So let's go and actually build regex to filter out the amount as well as the price per square. So I'm going to go and skip this part because I just want to keep the video as concise as possible. But I'm going to actually explain the regex that I'm going to build. So you don't need to worry about that. So here are the two regex. This one is for the price. So it's going to go and actually start filtering from the price tag. And then there is going to be a white space and a dollar sign. After that, it's going to go and check everything till there is another P there. So that is what we are going to actually use to filter out the price. And for the price per square feet, we're going to use this regex here, which is going to check per square feet and is going to get everything till the square bracket here. Let's actually go and use these. So I'm going to go and copy this one and I'm going to go back to our make.com. Here in our scenario, what we need is a text parser that is a match pattern. So I'm going to go and add it here and I want to paste the pattern that I just copied. After that, I can just go down and give it a text. So I'm going to go and feed in the text that we're getting from the HTML to text parser. So with that, it's set. The next thing that we want is to calculate the rate per square feet. So for that, again, we will have to add another match pattern. So let's go and do that. So here I'm going to paste in the other regex that I just built. So with that set, I'm going to feed in the text. All right. So now that we're done with adding regex, let's actually go and check out the results if we are getting their desired output or not. So let's go and click on run once. And this will give you this warning that a transformer should not be at the last. Just ignore this and run anyway. So the results are here and if we zoom in, we can see that we're getting individual listings and we're actually parsing them, stripping them off HTML and then we're getting the price right in here. If we go and check, so we're getting the price here, but there is something a bit more additional. This is because make uses greedy by default. We're going to fix this in a minute. 
and here if you see we're getting the per square feet price as well so let's actually go and now write these details into the sheet that i created right in here so i'm going to add a google sheet module now so let's go and add a row and let's connect it now i'm going to choose this spreadsheet that i want for this and i created a spreadsheet just for this which is this custom scraping demo next we'll have to select the sheet sheet one then we will have to select the columns that we want to populate so i want to populate the url column and for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and copy this base url and paste it right in here then i'm going to concatenate the split module here what this will do it will add the base url and the individual listing url after that i want the price so for that i'm going to go and actually set a variable right in here all right, so what this function is doing is actually grabbing in the price and then it's going to split it the moment this price occurs. After that, I'm going to add another variable for the price per square feet. Let's actually copy this one here and paste it here. And let's just delete this part. And for this one, the splitting trigger will be a square bracket. So with that, all is set. Let's just click on OK. Now that our automation is complete, let's actually go and try to run this out and check out the results on our Google Sheet. So let's go and click on run once. So as you can see, we get the URL, we get the price, and we get the price per square feet. And they keep coming in, but with a delay because we added the sleep delay of four seconds here and the sleep delay of four seconds here. So every eight seconds, there's a new entry right in here. With this, you can actually just click on any of these links. So I'm gonna go with this link here and here you can see that it is actually a real house with a price of 295,000. So if we go back to our sheet, it actually has the same price, which is mind blowing. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can actually do much more using make.com and play with the data that you're getting through the website. The purpose of this video was just to show you the potential that make.com actually has in web scrapping. So I hope this custom automation was valuable. If you found this insightful, hit the like button. Share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to SkillCurb for new cutting edge technologies. And ring that notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video where we continue to curb your skills with the latest tech. Stay curious and keep exploring.